On day one, I spawned in as a cute and not so ugly little duckling. I'm so tiny. I've only got two hearts. I guess that checks out. I'm not strong. I'm just a square of fluff. At least I can fly. Nope, I can't fly yet, but I can swim. And check out my duck family. I've got a mama duck and a bunch of duckling siblings. They were all swimming in a pond. Hey guys, wait up for me. Wow, this sure is peaceful. Just paddling along. My siblings and I had a great time splashing around together and following Mother Duck around. We didn't even run into any trouble. As the sun set that night, we made a little shelter and all huddled together to go to sleep. Maybe this will be an easy 100 days of survival. Hey, a duck can dream. On day two, we were all awoken by the sound of loud barking. I looked around and saw we were surrounded by some mean looking dogs. Our little duck shelter was super weak. The dogs got right in and started attacking us. Oh no, I would have to be brave. Feel the wrath of my mighty beak. I tried to fight back, but I instantly realized that a little duck stands no chance against big mean dogs. We would have to make a run for it. My duck family and I fled away, waddling as fast as our little webbed feet could take us. But it was no use. The dogs ended up surrounding us again. I have to do something. Whoa! Next thing I knew, I was tumbling fast down a steep hill. Ouch! Oof! You could definitely say I was on a roll. I fell with a splash into some water at the end of the hill. I was nowhere near my family anymore. They were all still far above me. My family was being kidnapped. I did what I could to find my way back in time to save them, but by the time I arrived, everyone was gone. This is not good. What'll I do without them? I made my way back to where I first saw my family. I wish I was playing with the other ducklings right now. I don't want to be all alone. If I wanted to survive long enough to find out what happened to them, I'd have to find some place to hide. I noticed a little hole along the edge of the pond and ducked into it. No pun intended. I waited out the night there and decided to track down my duck family in the morning. On day three, I woke up without any issues from the other predators. I hopped out of the hole in hopes of seeing that my family had returned. But to my great disappointment, there were no signs of other ducks around. With nothing else to do, I went around and started collecting and mining materials to build a better shelter. I didn't want to be out in the open if the dogs returned. I'll have to be smarter than the average bird brain when I build this shelter. I need to keep the big, bad dogs out. Eventually, I had a good amount of supplies and started crafting my craft table, wood tools, and then began the beginnings of my little house by the shore of the pond. Location, location, location. This house had a great view. It was the perfect spot for a duck like me. On days four to five, I still needed lots more materials for my base. I had to waddle off a little farther away from the pond to get more materials. Suddenly, I saw a peacock in the distance. I came closer and asked the peacock if I could get some wood. I explained my situation to him. The bird gasped. My family was kidnapped by a group of dogs, too. No way! What are the chances of that happening? Do you know where our families were taken? The bird wasn't sure, but explained that they were being kept somewhere so their feathers could be harvested over and over. That's awful, ruining lives just for some measly feathers. We heard a rustling and out jumped an ocelot. The peacock was instantly spooked and ran away. I wish I could get away. But that wasn't an option for me. I would have to be tough. I was only a tiny duck, but I wanted to find my family. I couldn't let this cat ruin my chances to do that. I was able to dodge a lot of the attacks the cat threw at me. Then without too much trouble, I defeated that rascally cat. You were a bad putty tat. Once the cat was gone, I could feel myself changing. I was leveling up. I wasn't a little duckling anymore. I was a little bit bigger duckling. I had extra hearts and let's test out these wings. Hmm, I can fly a little bit. I'm a flying talking ducky now. I could only fly a short distance, but it would give me some much needed advantages. This was neat. On day six to eight, I returned back to my base and started crafting some stone tools. As I worked, I started hearing something outside. I carefully went and looked around. I was hoping to see my duck family, but instead I saw one of those awful dogs sniffing around my house. I wasn't going to let him get away with his evil deeds. He would be sorry for stealing my family. Hey, you, dog, who are you? And what have you done with my family? The dog refused to give any information. Instead, it lurched at me. The dog probably thought that this would be an easy fight, but this time I had my stone tools. I was ready to take him down, and that's just what I did. Once the dog was gone, I saw that it dropped a note. I picked it up and read it. The note was in order for the dog to find the duck that got away and to bring me back to the farm located in the Badlands. Aha, I will quack this case soon enough. Now I knew they were somewhere in the Badlands. Having that dog come after me proved to be a very helpful thing after all. On days nine to 10, I did not want to waste any time. I traveled towards the Badlands. Having my new ability to briefly fly came in handy. Whenever I'd come across ravines or other obstacles, I could flop my way right across them. Up, up, and away! By and by, I made it to the Badlands with no harm done. I spotted the farm, but it didn't look so much like a farm. It looked more like a prison. There were so many sad animals fenced in and caged up. So many birds in cages. That's so mean. Birds need to be free to flap and fly. They shouldn't be cooped up. 
I noticed all the depressed animals, but I didn't notice the big wolf guard staring me down until I was close to her. I assumed she would yell at me, but instead, she lowered her voice. You shouldn't be here. I would run far away from here if I were you. Wait, huh? you're not going to try and capture me? Not if I don't have to. I'm not exactly happy with what is happening here. I'd leave myself, but things are complicated. Who is in charge here? I shouldn't be telling you any of this, but if you must know, he is a powerful monster. A big, big, big dog. Fearsome and powerful. No one dares go against him, or you'll be destroyed. Just then, another guard came out of nowhere and attacked me. You need to go to obedience school. Didn't anyone tell you not to bite? I tried to fight back, but the guard was too strong. There's only one way out of this. I would have to run. I didn't like the idea of running away from my family, but I knew if I wanted to help them, I'd have to live to fight another day. I took my chance, flapping my wings. I dashed away from the farm. On days 11 to 12, I ran away. I decided to take a rest in a tree. My wings and legs were getting so tired. I was new to this flying thing. I was getting ready to rest my eyes when I heard hooting. At first, I wasn't sure where the voice was coming from, but then I noticed an old owl on a branch. Who, who are you, young duck? Oh, I didn't see you there. Pardon me. I'm Zozo. What's your name? Who, I am Wayma the Wise. Who are you running away from? I'm running from these dogs that are rounding up a lot of birds and other animals. They are throwing them in cages. They took my whole family. You should be very careful. You don't want to end up in a cage. Who? I know of who you speak. For this happened when I was a young owl, not much bigger than yourself. Animals were being taken from their homes and forced to do the bidding of their captors. We fought together and eventually defeated our foe. I'm much too old to fight again, but I can see the world is in need of a hero. Perhaps that hero is you, Zozo. Who? Me? I don't know about that. I wasn't so sure that I could save the day. I couldn't even defeat one of the guards, but I knew I would do whatever I could to help my family escape. I bid the old owl goodbye and thanked him for his wisdom. I headed back to my base. I needed to regroup and figure out a plan. On days 13 to 15, I woke and realized what time it was. Upgrade time! I wasn't strong enough yet to go up against these dogs in the Badlands, but I could make my base more secure. After all, they could be sending more dogs out to grab me at any minute. So I started improving my little lakeside home. Man, I can't believe Big Dog is capturing all these animals. It's so messed up. If I didn't figure out something quick, more animals would be in trouble. I finished my upgrades and really wished my duck family could see the home I was building for them. I think they would get a quack out of it. Thinking of them made me get an idea. I could totally have them with me, just in a different way. A statue way. You know what time it is, right? Statue making time! I began building and thought about how the ducks taught me a lot. Life should be spent with the ones you love and being free as a bird. I liked the way it was coming along. The statue family would keep me company until I rescued my real family. I was really getting into building the statue when I heard a bird chirping excitedly. It was the peacock that had run away from the wild ocelot. Well, bless my soul, it's you. Good to see you're still alive after that run-in with the cat. Yeah, me too. My name is Zozo, by the way. I'm Taffy. I noticed your nice lake house. Did you build that all on your own? Yep, now I'm working on a statue of my duck family that got taken away. It's hard living on your own, isn't it? I miss my family too. Say, you could live here with me if you want. We can keep each other safe. I am working on a plan to rescue our families. Taffy thought that sounded great. As long as I won't be too much of a burden. I went inside and I made sure that she had everything a bird could need. On days 16 to 19, I decided it was past time I got around to making some iron weapons. I wandered around the area, and after a bit of flying around, I spotted something interesting. It was a mine shaft. Bingo! I entered the mine and followed the maze tracks to some iron. Of course, it wasn't a walk in the park down in the mines. It was a walk in the dark. I met some zombies and skeletons down there that were interested in ending my life. Back off, I've got a sword and I know how to use it. I started swinging my sword at them and had a couple close calls, but I knocked them out pretty quickly. It was good to see I was learning how to hold my own. Still, I didn't care to run into any more creatures, so after I had enough iron, I booked it out of the mine as fast as I could. Back at the house, I readied my supplies and got to work, crafting my stronger weapons and armor with my crafting table. These will give me the edge I need to go up against those tough guards. On days 20 to 22, it was time to release the Quacken. I told Taffy to keep a bird's eye on the base while I returned back to the Badlands. This time, I would be ready. Those guards won't see me coming. Because this time, I wasn't going through the door. I was flying overhead. I know what you're thinking. I wasn't the most accomplished flyer, but I could fly better than those dogs could. It was worth a try. As I approached the walls of the farm, I took a running start and launched into the air. I'm like a flying ninja. Yay! There's a duck flying over our walls, into the farm. Now that's what you call a bird brain. Well, I guess I wasn't as stealthy as I hoped I was. I landed near the guards. 
Wait a second, it's that troublesome duck that keeps getting away from us. Get him. He jumped into the air, dodging attacks. Toucan, play at this game, on guard. I got out my weapons and started handing out damage. I couldn't lie, it was a bit daunting. They would get a hit or a bite, but with my armor protecting me, they were toast after a few hits. What a rough day for you dogs, getting your tails handed to you by a little duck like me. Finally, I had finished the guards off. I didn't waste any time searching for my family. I started running all around the ground searching for my family. I wanted to save all the other animals I saw, and I promised myself I would help them. But first, I had to locate my family. But they weren't in any of the cages or fences. Where are they? What is all this squawking and hollering? A chill ran down my spine. A giant creature stomped loudly out of the foreboding base. It was enormous. A big dog. I was terrified. Guards, why are you letting some pipsqueak cause such a ruckus, eh? Looks like somebody ought to teach this quacker a lesson. Big dog let out a pss, pss, pss. Out came a tiger. He charged at me. I tried to fly away, but it was no use. This big cat could jump. Hi! I used my weapons, and his attacks broke my armor quickly. I was exposed, and I was losing hearts fast. Hiya! A big wolf came bounding into the fight. It was the nice guard. She told the tiger to back off. Let's get out of here. We ran for it. Who knew how many more guards would come running after us? Or worse, big dog. Shockingly, the tiger didn't chase after us. After a while, we felt safe enough to stop running. You saved my life. I couldn't stand by any longer, and you're really brave. You might have what it takes to take down the farm. I failed to save my family for a second time. I think it's pretty obvious I can't do that. The wolf assured me that she believed in me. It was nice, but I still felt awful that I hadn't saved them yet. Where are you going to go now? Honestly, I didn't think that far ahead. I just couldn't let you become catnip. I have a base I'm building with another bird friend. Why don't you come live there until you figure things out? I'd be very grateful to stay with you both. I led the way back to the lake house. By the way, I'm Zozo. What do I call you? Awoo is the name. Mm, seems fitting. On days 23 to 26, we got back to the base. Taffy greeted us, and I introduced Awoo to Taffy. I'll need to do some upgrades and add a room for you, Awoo. It shouldn't take too long. I made sure to make the room nice and spacious for Awoo. It was the best room in the house. I noticed I hadn't added to my statue in a while, so I got to work on that too. You know, I think I'll add my friends to this piece. I'd like to honor all my good friends and family. Just then, Awoo came trotting up. Wow, this is looking great. Everyone watching should subscribe so that they can see all the other cool stuff you'll make. What do you mean, everyone who's watching? It's just us here. Uh, they know who they are. On days 27 to 31, I went out exploring to find new resources. I was pecking around when I heard someone who sounded very upset. I followed the voice and came upon a raccoon. Hello, is everyone okay? No, everything is not okay. I've been kicked out of my house by a big old monster. He thinks he can just push me out of my home because he's mean and can destroy me super fast. Huh, nobody ain't got no respect these days. I tried to calm the raccoon down and asked him to show me to his house. He walked away and showed me to his home. I approached the door and sure enough, there was a monster cooped up inside. The monster growled and told me to get lost before I became its next meal. Listen, this isn't your home. You really shouldn't take things that aren't- Are you still talking? Be gone! Be gone or be eaten! Silly food talking back to a predator such as I? If I weren't so cozy in here and already eaten three meals today, why I'd gobble you up in one bite. Scram, pests! It was clear this rude guy wasn't going to listen to anything I had to say. I'd have to teach this guy some manners, and I had an idea. On days 32 to 35, I started digging near the raccoon's house. What we had here was a reverse three little pig situation. In this scenario, the big bad wolf is inside the house and I need to blow the house down. And to do that, I started to dig a tunnel deep down under the house until I found some lava pools. This was one pool I did not want to get my feathers wet in. Now that I knew where the lava was, I headed back out of the tunnel. The next part of my plan was to find some creepers. As I came out of the hole, I quickly found some. I'm just here for your gunpowder. Don't mind me. Now that I had gunpowder, I just needed one more thing. Sand. I headed to the riverbed and gathered a bunch up. With the gunpowder and sand, I crafted some TNT. I think you might know where I'm going with this. I returned to the tunnel that I dug under the raccoon's house and ran down to the lava pools. I carefully set the TNT next to the lava and began setting a fuse up and out of the tunnel. Match, set, light. Everything was going according to plan. On days 36 to 39, I waddled up to the front door and called out to the monster. The door opened to reveal the grouchy foe. Hello again. I thought I'd let you know that you have a limited time offer to leave this house before I huff and puff and blow this house down. And how do you suppose to do such a thing? Easy. I have a brick of TNT nearby and a fuse that's ready for me to light. TNT? It's dynamite and I'll win this fight. I would slither on out of here if I were you. This house isn't worth your life. 
You talk too much, duck. I yield to no one. Be gone. Okay, but don't say I didn't warn you. I activated the fuse and down the signal went into the tunnel. I took cover. There was a giant explosion and the floor of the house gave way, sending the monster to his fiery grave. Yes, my plan worked. The raccoon was nearby and watched the whole thing. Was your plan to destroy my entire house? The raccoon was not exactly happy, despite the fact that the monster was gone. I felt bad. Maybe I had been a little intense with my plan. Now how am I going to afford to rebuild my house? Put it on my bill. That was a joke. I don't actually have any money, but what I do have is a really big lake house that would totally fit you. I have other friends staying there too. Why don't you come stay there with us? The raccoon grumbled but agreed. He was still a little sore about his house being blown to smithereens. I showed him the way to the lake house and we made our way there. On days 40 to 43, we arrived back to the lake house. The raccoon sure was a grouchy fellow, but something about him was endearing too, like an angry little elf. They are just adorable when they get mad. You can't help but smile when they yell at you. I showed the raccoon around and created him a raccoon-tastic space for his home. I went over to my statue creations. We had my duck family and taffy. I loved how it was looking. It was only right to build a statue of the raccoon too. I started building the raccoon statue. Looking at all these family and friends in the statues made me think about another creature that had been so nice to me, Waymar the wise owl. I didn't want anything to happen to him. Maybe I'll go visit him and see if he would like to stay at the house. We are safer in numbers. I don't want him getting captured. On days 44 to 49, I returned to the tree where the owl lived. I found him sitting under the tree, but he didn't look so good. Mr. Waymar, are you okay? Who? Who? Ah, Zozo, my dear boy. <coughs> I was worried you might have been one of the henchmen. I'm fine. I'm just feeling a little under the weather. It's hard to get food and such these days. I can't fly, you see. I'm kind of stuck in this tree. That was not good. I couldn't stand by and let Waymar suffer. I told Waymar that I wanted him to come live at the house with us and we would help take care of him. He was so grateful but didn't know how he would get there. I'll figure out something. I'll find a way to carry you there. I immediately thought of the mine carts in the mines. Oh, those would work great. I just needed a way to push it along. I headed back to the mine and started collecting the tracks for the cart. I would make a track from the owl's tree to the base. That should be enough. I took everything back to the owl and laid some tracks down and rebuilt the cart. Climb aboard! Once he was in, I pushed Waymar along in the cart, picking up the tracks as I went along and setting them ahead until I made it all the way back to the lake house. I was excited to build him a room in the house. My little misfit family was growing so much. Waymar was super grateful for the help. He couldn't believe he had us to care for him now. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing. I'm an owl. On days 50 to 53, I decided to go deeper in the mine to find some diamonds. I hadn't seen diamonds yet, but I was certain I'd run into some if I went a little farther in. As I went deeper, I ran into a big stinky toad. I smell something most foul, and it's not me. Aha! Care for a slice of my sword? I swung my sword while the toad tried hitting me with his tongue. He was no match for me though, and I quickly took him out. I went a little farther and ran into some tarantulas too. Ooh, these guys creep me out. I made quick work of them, swinging my sword as hard as I could. They too were soon gone. That's when at long last, I had found the diamonds. I mined them up as quickly as I could and then headed back home to make them into things. I made a strong pair of armor and some super strong weapons. As they say, diamond weapons hurt forever. I definitely felt I had a better chance of kicking bad guy booty with these upgrades. I just needed to figure out where my family was being held. As I was crafting, one of my friends told me Waymar needed to see me, so I went to his room. Hey, Waymar the Wise, you wanted to see me? Oh, oh, Zozo, I have loved being here. I feel so much happier. Oh, <coughs> I hate to seem ungrateful for asking you anything, so you know what? Never mind. It was silly anyways. No, please, I want to help. I'm happy to do anything. Anything at all. Well, okay, if you insist, I have the most overwhelming craving for a tropical fish. I loved eating it when I was younger. My siblings and I would devour them when we were in the nest together. <coughs> oh, how I miss those days. Sure, that's no trouble at all. I'll go right away. Waymar was so excited to hear I would help him. I started on my quest immediately. On days 54 to 57, I finally reached the water. There was a perfect spot for catching tropical fish. Now if I was a gorilla or hoglin, I might have trouble getting this fish, but I was a duck, so I was in luck. I paddled out into the water and dove after the fish. Okay, this is a little trickier than I thought. I spotted a school of fish and started swinging my sword. Eventually I got one. I kept swinging until I had gotten a few more. Well, now to simply swim back to the shore with no problem. Ah! Somebody bit my tail feathers! It was a shark! I was under attack! Actually, I was more over attack as the shark was below me. Oh, you like picking on smaller fish, do ya? Wait a second, don't you eat smaller fish too? Well, yeah, but that one was supposed to be mine. Now scram! I fought the shark. It was tough, but eventually I won thanks to my upgrades. 
Oh, check me out. I'm growing. I'm a much bigger duck now. I had leveled up. Finally. Hey, maybe I can fly now. I thought a happy thought, took off running, and started flapping my wings. I zoomed into the air. This was amazing. I can fly. I can fly. I can fly. On days 58 to 62, I arrived back in the base with the fish. As I climbed into the base, I saw that Waymar was even worse off. Oh no, Waymar, you don't look so good. Here, I brought you your favorite fish. This should help. <coughs> Thank you, Sozo. I don't have the energy to eat it just yet. Let me just put it here. I remember when Mother would return home with the fish back in 1932, just as you just did. <coughs> she liked them lightly pan-fried <coughs> and put a dollop of cranberry sauce on, on, on the side. Waymar? Waymar? Waymar suddenly passed away with a smile on his face. I wondered if I had gotten him the fish sooner if I would have saved him, but I was also glad he took his final breath, knowing he was cared for and not alone. He was going to be very missed. On days 63 to 66, I was moping around the base. I felt so sad, and that was okay. I just needed to let out my feelings and be upset. I went over to the statues and had a good sob while I added another one to the bunch. I wanted to honor Waymar's memory by adding him to the group. The statue made me feel better, and I could smile again. There was my wise friend Waymar staring back at me. This place was becoming a whole museum full of statues. It was beautiful. On day 67 to 70, Awu came up to tell me that they had found something. It's a note from Waymar. You're going to want to read this. I took the note and read it. Zozo, check out the old fort east of here. Your family might be there. And remember, things aren't always what they seem. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Believe in yourself and your plans. What was that supposed to mean? It was a nice sentiment, but I feel like it was some kind of coded message. I'd try to remember that. Well, Awu, looks like I need to follow these clues. Can you help keep watch over the lake house while I'm gone? Awu was up for the task. In the morning, I would take my leave. On day 71 to 74, I went in search of the hidden prison in the tundra. As I traveled across the snowy forest, I spied a fort hiding in the mountains. Is that it? I saw that the fort was active and that there were guards that looked just like the ones from the farm. They were carrying large shipments of feathers out of the fort. This place must be a prison where the other ducks and birds are being held captive. They are harvesting their feathers. My blood boiled. I didn't waste another moment. I drew my diamond weapons and with my diamond armor, I charged in. I started swinging my sword with all my mighty duck strength. Those guards didn't stand a chance. I couldn't believe how easily I blew through them all. Feel the wrath of my revenge. I made my way into the prison, cutting down anyone who stood in my way. I was feeling like I could take on anything at this point. On day 75 to 78, I reached a room that looked important. I barged in, unafraid, and saw the tiger that had almost destroyed me back at the farm. I felt a tinge of fear creep back into me. Did I have what it took to go up against him? Regardless, what choice did I have now? My family could be in this very room. I shook off my fear and went head to head with the cat, or clawed a sword rather. This tiger was still tough. I got lots of good hits in, but he was so strong. It wasn't doing that much damage. He was good at blocking too. He even scratched me a few times. And I saw tons of birds in cages. Maybe my family wasn't here. As we fought, I noticed a big lever. It looked important. I took a chance and hit it hard. All of a sudden, the cage door swung open. The birds were free. The tiger was in shock at his sudden misfortune. What's the matter? Cat got your tongue? Some of the birds started to attack him. While he was distracted by all of the birds flying out of their cages, I was able to attack his weak spot. He was done for. The tiger was no more. I looked around the room and saw my baby duck siblings. They were so excited to see me and couldn't believe how much I had grown. I was so relieved to see them. And where's Mama Duck? The ducks look sad. Mama got taken by the big bad dog to his mansion. The other birds say that it's on some sort of volcano. That seems like a bad place to build a mansion. This dog isn't as smart as I thought. Don't worry, little ducklings. I will rescue Mama. On day 79 to 84, I spent some time searching the room where I had originally found the tiger. You never know what kind of information you can find, and this tiger was clearly a leader of this operation. He had all sorts of confidential information laying around, and if nothing else, I could take his valuables. He didn't have any use for them now that he was toast. I looked all around and found a treasure chest. Bingo. I opened it up and found a map. I looked closer. Well, what'll you know? A map right to the Volcano Mansion. And what else do we have here? I saw that there was a whistle in there too. I blew it, but nothing happened. Why he kept a broken whistle, I'll never know. But uh, I'll just keep it, just in case. With the room fully inspected, I went back to the ducklings. All right, you guys, let's get the quack out of here. I built you a home that's super secure. Let's go. 
I saw some of the birds that had helped in the fight against the tiger. They looked unsure of where to go and what to do. I invited them back to the lake house with us. They were very grateful and agreed to come with us. We waddled as fast as we could back to the base. On days 85 to 89, I returned safely home with all my ducklings in a row. I immediately started expanding the house and made more rooms for all of the birds. They loved their new living quarters. Sure beats a small cage. Awu and Taffy had something exciting to show me while I was away. We built something very enchanting. They had found items to make an enchanting table and had what we needed to enchant my armor. Wow, thank you! This is incredible! If I wanted to rescue Mama Duck, I needed to be as ready as possible for going up against Big Dog. This would give me a fighting chance. On days 90 to 94, I walked over to my field of statues. They were almost all done. I just needed to finish building the rest of Waymar's statue. I was so excited to reveal all of my statues to my friends. As I looked at Waymar's statue, I thought about the strange note he had given me. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. Huh, you know, that gives me an idea about something. I put the finishing touches on the statues and was finally finished. A field of all my favorite friends. What a sight! On days 95 to 97, I knew it was time to go rescue my mom. I followed the map to the mansion on the volcano. This place was spooky. I could see the appeal of building a mansion on the volcano now. That is, if you're an evil villain, it's perfect for that vibe. I had to admit, I felt a bit scared. And that was okay. That didn't mean I was going to run away. No, I was saving my mother. Come dogs or lava. I brandished my weapons and started fighting my way through the guard dogs along the path to the door. On day 98, I was exploring the mansion when I went into a room with a strange looking bunny man inside of it. What the? Who are you? Who am I? Who are you? Oh wait, I'm you! You're me! Yeah, you're me from my bunny video! Oh yeah, that was an awesome adventure! When everyone is done watching this video, they should go check that one out! Amazing! Well, I've got a family to save! See ya! On day 99, I made it into Big Dog's lair inside of the spooky mansion. After defeating tons of guards, I felt something funny happening. I was leveling up! This is just what I needed! I needed to be a mighty duck to defeat a massive dog! I'm as strong as I can get now! I was super buff! I was going to give Big Dog some trouble with my new strength. He's going to have to answer to this firequacker. It was time for the ultimate smackdown. I looked around the room and saw Mother Duck in a cage. Mom! Zozo, what are you doing here? I'd like to ask you the same question, troublesome quacker. Huh, looks like you haven't learned your lesson. And you've been hitting the gym, I see. Like that's gonna help you. I'm here to take my mother home. Can't you see me and your mom are madly in love with each other? Trying to split us up, are you? I'm not in love with you, you freak! You will be if I keep you locked up long enough. It's called Stockholm Syndrome, love. Look it up. Works in the fairy tales all the time. Dude, you've got some serious issues. This is no way to treat someone you like or love. That's no way to treat anyone. What a weirdo. This dog needed to be put out of his misery. I drew my weapon and attacked Big Dog. I gave him everything I had. Every bit of strength I could muster went into every hit. But he was still too strong. I was barely making a dent. Compared to him, I was like a yappy chihuahua. My blows were just not dealing enough damage. Maybe he was right. Maybe I couldn't defeat him. Had I come all this way just to fail? Then I remembered the broken whistle in the chest. Just because you can't hear or see something doesn't mean it isn't working. I pulled out the whistle and blew it. Nothing. But that's how it was supposed to work. It was a dog whistle. Only dogs can hear it. Big Dog stopped attacking and sat politely. Good boy. Now play dead. Big Dog's armor came flying off of him. Don't look. Big Dog was completely hairless. Big Dog explained that he wanted all the feathers to cover his naked self. There is nothing wrong with being hairless, and I'm sure many of us would have donated feathers to you, but you chose to ruin people's lives over this. I have had enough with your silly excuses. You aren't going to cage up anyone ever again. With that, a gladiator kicked him out of his window and down into the river of lava. On day 100, I let my mom out of the cage and we went back to the lake house. The ducklings were so excited to see their mother. We all had a wonderful reunion. I introduced everyone to my new family. Everyone couldn't stop raving about all the crazy adventures we'd had and how great the lake house was. We were going to live happily ever after. No more living in cages, just freedom and family.